we're going to go over a couple of techniques on uh, making some fused or kiln fired glass. Here's a simple, very simple piece, and this is a nice example of how the glass does so, a lot of the work for you. Here's the glass prior to firing, and this is just two layers, a piece of the base glass plus some clear glass over it, and when it's fired it becomes one solid and smooth and rounded piece. So we're going to cut a piece from here, and the glass cutter, this is the one that I use, and then the pliers which actually break the glass, makes it really nice and easy to break the glass, follows the line. Now I'm going to take a piece of the clear glass. Now all this glass is made specifically for fusing, so it's all tested compatible. You cannot use just any old glass for fusing because you will end up with stress in the glass and the glass will break. So we break that. Now we have our two layers. And so this piece beforehand becomes this piece after it's fired. And as a funny technique, what I use to uh, attach the glass together so it stays together in the kiln is I use hairspray. Hairspray gives it just enough tack that it stays together, stuck together in the firing, and it burns out clean in the kiln. It doesn't leave any residue. So that's a simple technique. Now here's um, a piece I, I call this Mega Doodles. It's based on drawings that I have done and I was able to translate them into glass. And what I've done with this is first I did my original drawings in pencil on some graph paper so I made sure my sizes were good. And then I redrew them with ink on a vellum which I used to make the films. Now what I did to get the films from here to something on the glass is I, I make a photo, I use photosensitive films and I'm, I fired on a UV light table and what it does is anywhere that the film is exposed to light it hardens and where it is not exposed to light it, it does not harden and will wash out. So anywhere that's black will wash out on the films and this film then is adhered to the glass. These pieces here are made, I'm actually going to do films on these as well. So this is the piece that's prepared. It's got an enamel on top of clear glass. The ones on the Mega Doodles was an enamel on top of black glass. And here's a sample. This is some various colored glasses with a brown enamel over it. When they're fired, it'll be a, a deeper brown. And then once I have my films, what happens is I take the film and I have a sandblasting cabinet uh, at home and I blast away and any place where there's black on the original drawings is, is sandblasted away on the finished piece. So this piece here, when I sandblast it, the, the image, all the black parts will be clear and then the background, everything else will be green. And in the case of these ones, the black was the base color and the enamel was the color that I put over it. So I blasted away some of the enamel on each one of these in order to get the designs. They're very beautiful. Thank you. There's quite a few steps involved in it, but I think it's worth the effort once it's finished. Now I have recently got into doing some work using recycled glass and it's nice because it cuts down on costs, but it also gives um, new purpose to things that would normally be thrown away, dumped on the side of the road or at the beach, or just found in a landfill. Um, what I do is I cut rings from glass bottles and then I fire them in the kiln and here's a sample of a piece. And I do a number of different things with them. Some of them I make jewelry with and some of them, one of the things that's doing very well are wind chimes. And this is a bunch of wind chimes. They were all cut from the same bottle, but they have such a wonderful scent. And what's even better is that they really withstand a lot of banging around. I have a few on my front ports that have been there for a couple of years. In all weather, I leave them out. It's figure it's the best uh, test for them. And they're still just as good as they were the day I put them up. 
So how I go about this is I cut scores in the glass, in the bottle, and then I break them. The breaking is the harder part because you get a lot of loss. There's some pieces that are just not going to follow the score line. Every once in a while you got a bottle that just, no matter what you do, it doesn't want to break. And other ones, they just pop off really nicely. Um, it's kind of tricky, but I've um, worked on it for quite a while and I have a pretty good pretty good system going so it does it, it ends up being a lot of fun and the best part though is then I take it fire in a kiln and it's this really neat product it's a great these wonderful circles without a whole lot of effort and it's recycling glass that would normally not have any purpose at all and it's nice to see it become an art project instead this piece here is something that I had made and this is all from scrap um, window glass and I went to a local um, window place where they put in makeup windows for you or special um, shelving or anything and I just asked if they had any scrap glass and he gave me a whole bucket full of them and I created um, a few different pieces like this and it's uh, it's neat because the, the window glass doesn't melt the same as the art glass it's it's a stiffer glass so it, I purposely fired it so it would be very dimensional because I knew it wouldn't flatten out like the uh, art glass that I use. It looks does. great. So it was uh, kind of a fun piece to work yes, with. Yes, it's gorgeous. <clears throat> Thank you. Great, Jane. Thank you so very much. Thank you.